Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I uploaded, but since then my surgical rotation has ended and I have, I'm taking my surgical shelf on Tuesday and I went away for two weekends to see my family so it's been a little busy and so you know I put this on the back burner a little bit but I wanted to make sure I got this video out for you guys so you can learn a bit about my orthopedic surgery rotation so just jumping right into it my rotation was 12 weeks long and my schedule for this rotation was Wednesday through Friday uh, those were the outpatient clinic days and then surgeries were on Mondays and Tuesdays and the outpatient clinic days ranged from eight hour to 12 hour days, depending on how many students we have in the rotation, so it really fluctuated. And also the surgeries were divided up in priority of which students had seen you know, the least surgeries uh, compared to those who had seen the most. And I specifically chose this rotation because I had heard really great th things about the preceptor, and also I knew that the schedule was a little bit more flexible than some other preceptors. And given that I'm not necessarily interested in pursuing a specialty in surgery, I didn't feel the need to pick a surgical rotation where it was 12 hour days every single day, five to seven days a week. That just wasn't really what I was looking for. However, uh, there were some other preceptors that I could have chosen who had that schedule who probably would have given me more actual OR experience, um, but I was fine with the experience that I got at this rotation, but I just did want to put that out there that my OR time and my surgical experience that I got on this rotation uh, was a lot less than what someone might get uh, who, int who intended Potentially chose a preceptor who uh, had their students in the OR all the time as opposed to more of an outpatient setting. Now like I mentioned my shelf exam is next week and I have been studying just with three three to four resources really I want to say two. I did all the USMLERX surgery questions and I did those in conjunction with the UWorld surgery questions and in there I mixed in some internal medicine questions as well. And on top of that, I watched some of the online med ed videos. I didn't get through all of them. There's just a lot, so it takes up a lot of time to watch all that content. But I also have been reading through the Pistana's surgery textbook, notebook, whatever it is. It's that thin 250 page textbook, which has been great. So now that those details are out of the way, I will tell you what I loved about the rotation and things that I wasn't so crazy about. And I will also start that by telling you what we saw on the day to day. Like what, what, what do you see in orthopedics? So for those of you who might not know, orthopedics is a branch of surgery that essentially revolves around the musculoskeletal system. So we deal with patients and their bones and their muscles. And one thing that I really liked about orthopedics is that you learn so much about the body that is relevant to virtually any aspect of medicine, including psychiatry, and I'll mention that a little bit later. And I say that because a lot of the musculoskeletal conditions that we would see in orthopedics are conditions that are seen in the general population, like osteoarthritis, slip discs, disc herniations, meniscal tears, ligament tears. So no matter what specialty you are practicing in, you're most likely going to experience a lot of patients who are dealing with these comor com comorbid conditions. And so even though I'm not necessarily interested in pursuing a specialty in orthopedics, everything that I learned will be relevant to my residency and as I go through my electives. Um, and especially, I, I would say that especially for those of you who are doing general practice or internal medicine, if you have the choice to do an ortho rotation, 100% do it. So one specific thing that I really liked about this rotation is that I was really able to develop and improve my skills regarding interpretation of radiographic images, so x-rays, MRIs, CT scans. And part of that was because my preceptor was really great about making a teaching session kind of about every patient. For every patient that came in, we would look at images, even if they weren't the images that we were worried about for the day's visit. We were looking at images from the patient's past, um, and we were forced to be able to uh, point out what the uh, pathologies were, um, to identify what issues there were with the bone most particularly, and as well as the tissue when you're looking at MRI and CT. And one of the other things that was really nice is that you got really familiar with the 
human anatomy or the physical anatomy because you're doing the range of motion testing on every patient that walks in the door. And I have this really great handout that I will kind of briefly show and maybe I can post it on my blog or something. But this just uh, was given to me at the beginning of my rotation and it essentially goes over all the different types of range of motion testing that you can do and what the normal degrees of uh, flexion, abduction, extension, and so on and so forth are. So if I put it up here, maybe you guys will be able to see. Um, but I relied on this a lot during the rotation. It was really helpful because it's always nice to have a little bit of a diagram to refer to when you're actually comparing and looking at someone and trying to figure out, okay, are they looking like they're abnormal or are they okay? Is their flexion okay or is their flexion abnormal? It's hard to identify that if the patient's only slightly affected with whatever they're dealing with, but this image was really great. So if you're going into ortho, I definitely recommend, uh, recommend looking up a range of joint motion um, diagram or maybe I'll post this on my blog so you guys can just have it. Some other day-to-day -day things that we got to get involved with at clinic was the casting workshops and also applying and removing casts for patients as well as splints. Uh, I had a really good upper and lower extremity splint and cast workshop uh, over the 12 weeks where I learned how to you know do all of that stuff apply a cast and splint for all different types of scenarios that was really helpful to have that kind of stored in the back of my brain whether or not I have to use it anytime soon it was just great to learn that we did a fair amount of suture workshops and one thing that was really cool about doing an ortho rotation is that we did a lot of synovial injections so the steroid or lubricant um, hyaluronic acid injections in you know the uh, knee joint and the shoulders and the tessie back injections and our preceptor would let us do the injections so of course he'd supervise us and he would teach us how to do it and everything but we were we learned everything from how to drop all the lidocaine and the kenalog and put it all up in a syringe and then inject it into the person that as well as joint aspiration um aspiration of fluid for patients who had joint effusions and then also you get pretty familiar with all the different types of testing that you can do um, and I'm not sure how to phrase what kind of tests but you know what I mean when I say um, like the anterior drawer test or the posterior drawer test or the Thompson test for your Achilles tendon. So it was cool to actually see a lot of those things that you have to learn for boards kind of be implemented in practice and that was just a fun thing to be a part of on the day to day. And then earlier I mentioned that I learned a lot of stuff relevant to psych. I'll mention why now. Um, so at my ortho rotation, we actually had our clinic in conjunction with a psychologist and their psychology counseling students. And so uh, they offered free counseling services to our patients. And what something that I never really thought about that I learned when I was there is that patients who are experiencing a chronic pain due to their osteoarthritis or um, musculoskeletal conditions just from degenerative change or long-term issues that haven't been able to be solved often deal with psychological issues as well. Their pain causes them to become very depressed because they can no longer walk up the stairs or leave the house like they used to and they slow down their family and their friends and they start to feel really bad about that. It can lead to anxiety and even thoughts of suicide. And then on top of that, in orthopedics especially, you're treating patients with chronic pain, we're often treating them with opiates. And so we had to learn all about the, the prescription monitoring program, which was really interesting to see, um, and learning how to walk that fine line between treating a patient who needs pain medication because they have, there is you know radi radiologic evidence that there is something wrong with them and they should be in a lot of pain, but also, not wanting to give them so much pain medication that they're going to be worse off because there is an increased risk of them becoming addicted addicted to their medications and then trying to figure out um you know what are their risk factors do they have a history of substance abuse do they does their family have a history of substance abuse um were they abused as children you know there are multiple different factors that i didn't know that contribute to an increased risk of the patient actually having a poorer outcome if we give them narcotics than if we were to treat their pain with another type of medication. And so it was really interesting on this rotation to kind of work side by side a psychologist and see her take uh, working with the physician to see how they could best treat the patient and not just look at them as a physical being but also someone with a conscience and a um, mental well-being that needs to be taken care of as well. 
now that I've covered all the things that we really saw in clinic and things that I loved about this rotation, I'll quickly touch on some of the things that uh, wasn't that weren't so great. So first thing I mentioned earlier, going into this, I knew that I wasn't gonna get a whole ton of OR time and I had intentionally chosen this rotation because I wasn't too concerned if I spent more time in the outpatient setting than the inpatient, but I didn't get a whole lot of uh, actual scrubbed in surgical OR time. When I did, I got to see some cool procedures, um, but I really didn't get a full standard surgical rotation experience that someone would get at an American school, for example, or even a different Caribbean school. Not because uh, of my school, but just because I think every preceptor runs things their own way, and this was just how my preceptor ran his clinic. So. Um, that's definitely something to look out for when you are applying for rotations. If you get a say in which preceptors you have for your rotations, if you are interested in surgery, for example, or you really want some experience for 12 weeks in a thorough uh, surgical rotation where you can really get your hands dirty and scrub in all the time, then make sure that you uh, find out that your preceptor, what your preceptor schedule is like and what kind of uh, experience you're going to get with them. And you can do this just by talking to other students in your program and asking around and even asking the advisors for your, uh, who do your clinical clinical rotations. One other downside is that when I started this rotation, there were a ton of students on service. So you didn't actually get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your patients because we had to pair up. And then along with that, with orthopedics, you have to really do a, thir a thorough history and that goes for surgery in general. Um, but the patient visits took a lot of time, even outpatient, because you really had to make sure that you were assessing their cardiovascular system and their respiratory system and that you're getting kind of the nitty gritty details about their past medical history because of course you can't recommend uh, a patient for surgery if they have a whole bunch of comorbid conditions or if they have you know, a heart failure and a history History, a recent history of a heart attack a month ago or you know COPD and you're gonna have to put them on anesthetics which is gonna depress their respirations already and they already have poor respiratory function you know there are all these things you have to consider and so it is a little bit stressful and a little bit tedious when you're taking a patient history just because there's so much information that you really need to know about the patient and then I'd say the last thing about the rotation that you might want to know going in is that it's kind of a pain to learn all the vernacular. There are so many words and descriptions of different types of musculoskeletal conditions that sound the same and so many acronyms and abbreviations of things that as a student is really like you really have to pick up on things quick. An example of that, you know, is the difference between spondylosis and spondylolysis and spondylolisthesis. They all sound so similar, but they're all slightly different. So that can be a little bit of a pain when you're jumping into it, but not a reason to not do the rotation. Just something I would recommend knowing before you get into the rotation. And that pretty much brings me to the end of everything that I wanted to mention about this rotation. Overall, I had a re really great time. I had the opportunity to be kind of like a lead student near the end, uh, which I only mentioned because it was really nice to get involved in all the different patient scenarios. I was able to get more hand or one-on-one -on -one time with my preceptor, which was really great. So I just want to throw it out there that if you ever have a chance to get involved and you know be kind of one of the student leads in any rotation. I know a lot of preceptors give students the opportunity for this. I definitely recommend doing it. It's a lot more responsibility and it can be kind of a pain sometimes because you're expected to be the first one there and the last one to leave type of thing. Um, but it'll definitely improve the quality of your experience at the rotation, I think, and I definitely found that to be the case when I was there. Other than that, I know this video is already a little bit longer than I want it to be, so I'm gonna leave you there. And if you have any questions about orthopedics or a surgical rotation as a Caribbean medical student, feel free to leave them down below or shoot me an email as always. Thanks again so much for watching today and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.